Hey Retro fans, welcome back here to RGF Retro Game Force. And one of the biggest things on the retro gaming community is about CRT TVs uh, to be the way to go to play retro gaming. And uh, what if I told you that this footage is not coming from a CRT? So yeah guys, this is basically a filter coming from a shader on RetroArch. So are you curious how this is achieved? Well, let's find out. So let's start from the beginning. I assume that you guys watching this video knows what RetroArch is. If you don't know, RetroArch is a piece of software that basically aggregates a lot of emulators from a lot of different systems, including, well, different configurations like shaders, filters and whatnot. So if you know RetroArch, cool. If you don't know, you need to check out what RetroArch is before you go forward in this video. Now, I also assume that you know what CRT TV means, so CRT TVs were the old TV sets that we had back in the 80s and 90s, and uh, those systems that we are emulating here on RetroArch, these old systems and consoles, they were built to be displayed on a CRT TV using exactly that old technology, which is completely different as the modern TVs, LCDs and OLED screens that you have nowadays. Now let's talk then about the shader itself. I will leave the link here on the description below so you guys can check the uh, GitHub page of the guys. The name of the shader is CRT Beam Simulator and this basically avoids any kind of motion blur which is famous to unfortunately have on our modern displays. Now let's try to explain a bit how this shader works, uh, so basically it's taking the high refresh rate that we have nowadays in our gaming displays and uh, taking advantage of that it's basically simulating the CRT TV's uh, way of displaying and avoiding motion blur. So the highest refresh rate monitor that you have the better are the results. So let's check uh, how you can enable this on your RetroArch. So guys, here we are at the RetroArch main uh, user interface and uh, let me try to guide you through some uh, steps in order to uh, get this configured to use, um, yeah, to use this, this uh, shader. So first of all, you need to make sure that you're using the Vulkan uh, video driver instead of the, the Direct3D. Uh, because that's the default one so for that you need to go to settings video output and here you need to make sure that you have Vulkan selected because Vulkan is the only video driver that uh, supports this uh, this shader yeah so second of all you need to make sure that we have the latest shader uh, this is something that probably if you're using RetroArch you already are probably already up to date uh, with all the needed updates but for this one specifically we need to update the slang shaders so let's update all the shaders and, and get it uh, properly installed so another thing that we need to do is to make sure that you have our frame rate adjusted properly um, and uh, to do so you need to have, of course, um, a monitor that supports at least 120 hertz refresh rate, um, but uh, we need as well to configure it uh, accordingly. And for that, you need to do you need to go to video, and uh, we need to go to synchronization. And here, there's a few things we need to do. So pay attention one by one. You need to make sure that vertical sync, the V-sync, is on. This is important. You need to shade their subframes matching or matching as it could because it could be close enough. Maybe it's not listed here. If, if it's not, you need to select the closest, closest um, display frame rate as possible. And um, 
Also important is the sync to exact, exact content frame rate. You need to be off. You need to be off in order to use the shader. So with all this done, there is one more thing we need to do. It is on the uh, course settings. So we go to settings, you go to core, and then, oh, sorry, my mistake. You need to go to core and then on core, you need to go down on allow course to switch the video driver. So it needs to be off because if it's on, it could change to something that is not Vulcan and you really want to avoid that because it will not work pro properly if it, uh, if it goes so. So without all of this said and done, it should be okay to just go ahead, um, save, restart RetroArch just to make sure that everything is, is, is done properly. And afterwards you could launch um, a game for testing this and I will show you exactly how. So I have launched Streets of Rage 2, one of my favorite games of all time, so good example. And then uh, this is the regular um, regular settings, so there's no shaders configured. So for configuring the shader I need to press F1. And then with F1, I can go and just enable the shaders. By default, this is how you're going to see it with no shaders enabled. You need to enable the shaders. You need to go to load present, select shader slang, then go down until you find subframe BFI select. And then here we have the CRT beam simulator slang P. So select those settings and then it will apply and then just press F1 for check with the shaders on. As you can see on my capture card I'm not able to show this properly because um, I, the capture card doesn't support high frame rates. That's a problem, but um, yeah, on screen it looks really amazing. But let's start. Let's start again. As you can see, it's not showing this properly. It's quite dark, but let's go for it. Yeah, it's horrible, but I will show you that uh, I can assure you that on screen. This looks amazing. So let me show you on camera to make sure that you guys understand what I'm saying. Yeah, and now with the camera pointing to the screen, to my LCD screen, it's really unbelievable how this looks uh, on camera, right? So yeah, it's really cool to see new technology be able to mimic old technology in this way, in these regards. So yeah, please try this at home and uh, I'm pretty sure you will get, you will get impressed. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because it helps a lot here the channel and until the next video, take care and bye bye.